What if we have two countries, China and Peru, and they can make two goods, rice or tomatoes, and we're wondering, could they benefit by trading with each other? Well, there's two things economists look at, absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Now, absolute advantage is simply saying who can make more of that good per worker. Now, let's assume for this problem that Peru and China have the same number of workers. If they didn't, you'd just have to divide how much they can make totally by the number of workers. So here, Peru can make 50 units of rice and China can make 200 units of rice. So simply because China can make more, uh, they have the absolute advantage for rice. Now for tomatoes, same thing. China can make 100 tomatoes and Peru can make 50 tomatoes. So China has the absolute advantage again. Now notice it's clearly possible to have the absolute advantage for both of the goods. Or you can also only have the absolute advantage for one of the goods if we change the numbers around. Or for neither of the goods. Now here's the thing though. What economists look at is comparative advantage. That's really what matters more. Because if we wanted to decide trading based on absolute advantage, we'd say that China has to make both goods. But really what matters is the comparative advantage. And what that is, is that it's who has the lower opportunity cost for making that good. That's why we looked at opportunity cost earlier in this video. Now let's put it to use. So what is Peru's opportunity cost for tomatoes? Well, let's see. Their opportunity cost for tomatoes is the amount of rice over tomatoes, so 50 over 50. So that's equal to 1. Now, what is China's opportunity cost for tomatoes? Well, 200 rice over 100 tomatoes, which is 2. So their cost is 1. Their cost is two. For cost, we're looking for the lower cost, right? So Peru actually wins. They have the lower opportunity cost for tomatoes compared to China. So that's why they have the comparative advantage for tomatoes. Now, the cool thing about comparative advantage is if you know that one country or one person has the comparative advantage for one good, the other person automatically has it for the other good. We could do the math to prove why but that'll always be the case. So it's actually impossible mathematically for you to have the comparative advantage for both goods. Uh, if we were to do the math just to sort of verify, if we wanted to look at the cost now not of tomatoes, but of rice, Peru's cost of rice would be 50 over 50, still one. But now China's cost of rice would be 100 over 200, which is a half. And a half is less than one. So no matter what, if you have the lower opportunity cost for one of the goods, since the other opportunity cost is the reciprocal anyways, then you're going to be the higher opportunity cost for the other good. So that's why one country will specialize in one good and the other will specialize in the other. And that's why if you trade based on comparative advantage, what you can do is you can then, after trading, consume a point outside of your original PPF. So a previously impossible point for both countries is now attainable. You can't really produce that point directly, but after specializing and trading, you can consume a point for both countries outside of your PPF. And that's why there are always gains from trade. Now, suppose that the production technologies for one of your goods has improved. Suppose that you can make either fish and chips and you found a much better way to catch fish. Well, now your PPF then will actually shift a little bit. Now, if you're better at making fish, instead of 60, you can make more fish. But since your technology for chips hasn't really changed, you can still only make 60 uh, chips. So that's why your PPF will kind of shift out in this way. Now, of course, if you had a technological improvement that helped you make more of both fish and chips, then it would shift from this out to something like this, where both intercepts go up. Right.